Hi friends, Amanda here. Thanks for joining me for today's mandatory activity. Today I'm gonna to show you how I make a multi-wick candle. So we've got this guy here is a two wick candle. I wanted to add a multi-wick candle to my line and um, I was a little intimidated by how to do it, what tools did I need, how did I get the wicks properly equidistant from one another. And so I thought this was a good opportunity for me to show you guys um, which two tools I use to make this process really easy. Um, and so I'm gonna run you through all of that so you can see all there is to see. All right, it's been a minute since I've done, well, anything really, any tutorial, but uh, particularly since I've done a candle video and I was just prepping my jars um, to make a, a new line of candles that I'm working on. I'll insert a picture in here for you guys, but um, I, I have this new Easy Wick Setter tool and I just thought what a good opportunity to show you guys how I use it. So there are videos online. Um, I got this one from Candle Science and they have a video on how to like put the whole thing together. Um, it's really not that complicated. This is what the bottom looks like. And you can use it with a single wick. We just put the, the, this tube into the center wick and use it that way. Or you can do a multi-wick setting. So obviously you can do three. Um, I've chosen to do two. And depending on the circumference of your vessel, that will determine, you know, where you want your wicks and your testing and all of those kinds of things go into helping you determine what the right quantity is. In this case, I knew I wanted a multi-wick candle because I didn't have one yet. Um, and so I'm using these very small, I think these are CD3 wicks. Um, and this is how the spacing works for this particular jar. So it's, you know, a little, eh, little more than half an inch from each edge. Um, and this is the spacing between the two. So um, obviously if the jar were smaller, these would be centered closer together. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, but it's really pretty cool. So when you watch the video, like if you get one of these and you watch the video on how to put it together, um, it has these little rubber stoppers, but mine kept falling off, so I just left it alone. Um, but all I'm going to do here is take my wicks. Now, I've already attached my wicks to my wick stickers, but I'm going to peel off the wick plus a sticker. And you feed it into the center like that. And... It's magnetic, so it's gonna keep itself situated. So obviously I'll do both of them like that. Little wooden wick bit. All right, and your jars are already all wiped clean. All you do now is put this whole device onto the top of your vessel. And since it's, you know, gradiated here, it will sort of nestle itself at the right circumference, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna stick it in here like this. So that's what it looks like. It's, it's chosen this diameter to sit. And you can hear those little rods are, they're not touching the bottom, they're just sort of loose. But they're, you know, they're, the wicks are stuck to the bottom. So now you just take the plungers and plunge them down and pull the thing out and the wicks are exactly where they need to be, and every single one will be the same. So it's actually super fantastic. Do another one. But it goes really fast and you don't have to guess. Pretty cool so like you know the hard part really is kind of getting your wicks in the right position which you would do through your own wick testing um i did this a couple of times before i settled on this spacing and this wick size but i will probably put some music on for you guys and uh, fill these candles up with their wax and their fragrance and then um I'm going to show you how I secure 
the double wicks while they dry in case that is also helpful slash interesting. the three let's go back in the three I just poured and I'm gonna show you how I secure these wicks while they dry my favorite wick holders are these guys which are from Jayco Ashby I will link their Etsy shop um, in the description box below um, and they look like you know super strange like if you if you weren't a candle maker, you'd have no idea what this is. And um, there were many months that I was a candle maker and I didn't know what this was. <laughs> so um, here is how I use them. Let's just scoot all of these out of the way so we can focus on one. All right. So the way, and it comes with all these little tiny black rubber bands. The way I like to do this, um, you can see there are all these little like notch marks around the outside. So if you were to connect them, they would be a bunch of concentric circles getting progressively larger. Um, I'm going to slide one wick into one side and one wick into the other side. And obviously if you had multiple wicks or even more wicks, you'd need a different variety of this. Um, if you have a single wick, you can use the one in the center. Um, for my three wick candles, I use this one because then you can kind of arrange them into a triangle. Um, so they're all different sizes of these guys. But for the double wick, we want this one. And what you can do is line up these concentric circle marks along the outside of your vessel. So that way you know it's not like one wick is way over here and the other one's you know too far over to the side. You can kind of tell you know, like I see that this is sitting around the second line here and around the second line here, kind of the third-ish line here and the third-ish line here. So I know I need to scoot it a little bit more. And that looks about right. And then what I'm going to do is figure out which of these notch marks here, these little sort of diamond notches, um, lines up with my wick being straight. So actually... Let me take you off of the camera stand and show you what I mean. So if I look down here at my wick, I can see that it is bent a little bit there. And when I look from the top and I take, it's hard to do this with one hand, and I take this wick and hold it straight, it wants to move over to the left. So I know it's not quite in the right spot. Okay, so coming back around to the top, um, this one is straight up and down and kind of sitting comfortably in this notch that says 12. So I'm going to just move this one over into the notch that also says 12 because then you know they're equidistant. So now they're both in the 12. There, adjust it back sort of around the perimeter, the same, um, the same notch number down from the edge. Hopefully that makes some sense. And then what I like to do to keep the wick straight and taut is to pull it a little bit and it's going to want to naturally rest into that notch there. And I like to pull it over to the one next to it and take the rubber band and rubber band it twice. And that creates enough pressure that this isn't going to go anywhere, but it's not so tight that it pulls your wick up from the bottom because those wick stickers are not like, you know, indestructible. Um, so on this side, again, we've got the 12. I'm pulling it the other direction, but it's right directly across from the 12, so it's in the same spot still. But just because I want it to reach the arm to its 
right. And then once I have this secured with the rubber band, I will one last time adjust, oopsie, I'll one last time adjust where it's sitting on the edge of the container and then I will leave it alone. All right, so both my wicks are straight up and down. They're secured and it looks like it's a little bit off center. So here we're kind of between the second and third line, between the second and third line, between the second and third line, between the second and third line. So that looks great. All right, I'm gonna do it two more times with these last two and I'll just speed this up a little bit or give you some music or something exciting. But just you can watch it again. I'm going to leave these alone to set up and then we'll come back and take a look at them tomorrow once they've had a chance to fully dry and we'll pop these wick stabilizers off and trim our wicks and take a look. All right, so it's actually been a couple of days and I have a much larger mess full of things on my table here. Um, so excuse my wax drippings. I typically, um, I will cover the, the table cause it's one of those stainless tables here. Um, mostly because they are overhead lights and the reflection for you guys would be really, really awful. So, um, so that is why it's all brown craft here, but it's also helpful cause I spill. All right. Um, so getting these suckers off is even easier than it was to get them on, which was already pretty easy. So I'll just take a look here. Have you zoomed in? I zoom you in as far as I can go. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna roll off the little rubber bands. And then pull these little guys up, lift it straight off. And there it is. Take a little wick trimmer. If you don't have one of these guys, I'll link it for you below because it's angled. It makes it perfect for clipping your wicks. Uh, if you're just getting started, you might be doing with this with like nail scissors or something like that. Um, but I, this, this is a kind of a game changer because these suckers are nice and um, sharp and um, just not having to go in on top and, and you know, snip away at them with your nail scissors makes a big difference. So I've been using the same one for over two years. Um, so for what that's worth. All right. Okay, so just taking a look a little closer. Um, you can see the top is a little bit crackly, a little bumpy uh, right over here. Um, that's just a function of my wax I use. Um, Golden Wax 464, which I'll also link for you. And so that's kind of a pretty common top for, for me. Um, and I will hit that with a heat gun. I'll probably do that at the end of this video with a little bit of music, but I'll hit that with a heat gun just to even it out. So these wicks are nice and centered. They look great. They're gonna burn nice and evenly all the way through. And it's just a really good combo. So um, I hope that this was helpful for you. I know when I started thinking about multi-wicking the candles, it got a little bit confusing and I didn't really understand what all of this business was <laughs> or how it would be used. Um, but the combination of the easy wick setter and 
this uh, wick stabilizer has been a game changer. So I hope that this helps you with your multi-wick projects. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.